So um, we don't we don't have a a long uh, drawn out biblical theo theological lesson this evening. We want to go back to the to the basics, to a basic uh, principle, a basic lesson this evening. Um, and talking about how we should approach every day, how we should approach every day of our lives. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing to see the light of a brand new day. Um, we should not take this opportunity for granted, but we should take advantage of every day that God gives us in this earth. Um, people are leaving here every day, you know, um, and I think, I think nowadays is, is we, we hear about it so much because, um, of, of, of the media, the technology, you know, we know what's going on all across the, the whole world, um, with today's technology. So we know not only you know people leaving here in our own communities and our family and friends, but we know of countless people that's leaving here every day. All right, but the good news is that God has given us one more day's journey. All right, and there's a, there's a a way to approach it every day. All right. And I, I realize a lot is going on in this world today. A lot is going on in our lives. But listen, a day that God gives you is a blessing. That's the way we got to look at it. You know, he didn't, have to, he didn't have to touch us early this morning and wake us up. All right, we see that all through the day people leaving here. But... God has graced us with another day, and that's a blessing, my brothers and sisters. Just as simple as that. And we're going to talk about this this evening, just to, you know, just to jar your, your, uh, your mind. Just to, you know, take a shift in your thinking, you know, in how you approach your, your days, in how you approach your days, all right? To be able to wake up in the morning, you got to understand, when you go to sleep, it don't matter if you're taking a little cat nap, um, if you're taking a, a, a extended nap, or whether you go to sleep throughout the night and wake up in the morning. You got to understand, that's, that's like, that's the closest thing to death. You don't even know you're in this world. And it's God that watches over us and, and allows us to wake up out of that sleep and and see and and know we in this world that's a blessing you gotta think about these things you know some of us open our eyes and the first thing come out of our mouth is is, is something we complaining about and our situations could be much worse than what it is so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this evening about a different approach all right on the days, listen, that God gives us, <laughs> all right, he gives us. That's a blessing, all right? We're going to start with a, a basic scripture uh, in Psalms 118. I just want to speak encouragement and life into the, into the believers. I want to speak positivity into the believers. I want to speak faith into you. Um, a positive vibe so that, you know, you can see what a blessing it is to have more time. <laughs> that's good. That's good news. That's a gracious God to give us more time, a new day, a new day's journey. Um, Psalms 118 and a very familiar passage of scripture. In uh, verse number 24, says, This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
Now, how many of y'all stop to rejoice today? How many, how many of you, um, during, at any time during this day, in, in spite of what's going on in your life today, how many of you stop and, and just rejoiced? It, it may not be the, the best of circumstances right now, but see, when you understand the character of God, you understand the God that, that covers you and is watching over you, when you understand how good he is, how he has brought you, how he has made, made a way out of no way, how he has done great things in your life, when you realize how good he is, how faithful he is, you realize no matter what the circumstances is, it's still a good day. It's a good day to be here. Why? Because if your situations are bad, you serve a God that can turn around. And who knows, this might be the day that he does it. So you got to, you got to stay in a, a mindset or a mentality of rejoicing, being thankful, being grateful. All right. I was talking last week on um, talking about how to be more proactive with your life. And making, you know, making things happen in your life. Making the conscious decisions on things in your life. But between then and now, I've experienced some things in my life that, that, that has taught me not only are we supposed to be proactive, but there are times in our life where we have to be reactive. Okay? <laughs> Hey, so I experienced some some things in my life that uh, in this past week that that showed me the importance. Now, I didn't want to neglect, you know, being reactive. I just wanted to impress upon your heart to be proactive. Okay, not just sit back and wait for life to happen. But when life does happen, you have to learn how to react to the things that happen to you. All right. And what you don't want to do is allow things in your life, circumstances in your life, to control you. You have to be in control. You have to react in a way, like when the devil throws bad things in your life, or, or, or throws, uh, you know, tragedy or, or, or trials or tests. When he throws these things at you, you can't let it control you and get you to the point where... You know, you feel like, well, I don't want to go on. You know, I don't want to live no more. I don't want to, you know, try no more. I, You know, you can't be defeated because of what happens in your life. The Bible teaches us, and, and this is just a scripture. You can go through the Bible and, and, and see how God instructs us uh, on, on how to approach every day that he gives us. Okay. But this is just one scripture that says, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will do what? Rejoice and be glad in it. That, that's not saying what's happening in that day. They ain't got nothing to do with what's happening in that, in that day. That just means this is a day. This is a present moment I get to share with my God. This is a moment. This is this day that he has brought me to. This is a time of rejoicing because, like I said, if it's bad in your life, God can turn it around. This may be the day. And listen, you don't wait till things change to begin to rejoice and praise God. There is change happening within your praise. <laughs> when you begin to shout and rejoice and take that positive mindset, that that that. That mindset, I believe that things going to change on my behalf. Then things begin to shift. See, too many of us wait until things, you know, the aftermath to praise God. No. Praise him in advance. Wake up shouting, Lord, I thank you. This burden is heavy, but this is a day that you have made for me. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in it. I realize 
whatever going on, it could be worse. Mm. I know, I, I, I know, you know, I'm sensitive enough to know that there, there are people that have lost loved ones. And, you know, you try to be as strong as you can through that storm. That's a storm. I don't care how strong you are in the faith. When you lose that person, you know, that when you lose that person, it, it, it does something to you. It, it'll break you. Yeah. All right? It'll yeah. break you. I mean, that one person, you know, we, we have a heart toward all of humanity, but it's that one person you, you are so connected to and it, it breaks you. All right? But you got to understand, the Bible says that um, God is near to those who are of a broken heart. Mm. <laughs> that's the God we serve and if he mm. brings you to another day's journey rejoice because listen that may have been one person you lost but think about it God could have allowed the enemy to take your whole family at one time Amen. I'm just saying things could always be worse that's why we, we should never complain about our situation we should rejoice and be glad and hope in god that things will change during that day but listen if it don't change guess what you remain hopeful that if he shows you tomorrow when that day becomes the present you rejoice because that might be the day he shift your whole situation that's why it's important brothers and sisters we learn how to Approach our days with rejoicing. Be glad. Be glad. Yeah. Things could be a whole lot worse. I I um I had a little injury to my leg, my foot. And um, you know, somebody somebody like me, I'm 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 independent. I, I don't I don't rely on everybody to do things for me. And so when, when I, I found myself in a situation where I needed assistance and I found myself needing help, really needing help, really needing assistance. And it showed me, you know, you can't do everything. That's right. Now what you gonna do now? You gonna sit around here and mope and glope and, you know, doom and gloom like like it's the end of the world? Or you're going to take some initiative and do what you can do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hallelujah. It, it brought back to my mind when I saw, you know, I saw videos of people who have no arms and no legs. Yeah. People that who are blind that still accomplish things. People that can't hear. They, they, they do sign language because they can't speak. It's so many different handicapped people that don't have a leg at all, but mine's still attached. But I'm feeling like, oh, woe is me. What I'm going to do now? Mm. Well, God, God shifted my thinking. Look, you've been a Christian all this time. You've been my child all this time. You've been studying the word all this time. Now something happens to you and you don't know how to react to it. <laughs> no, you got to learn how to trust me and you got to be glad you got to rejoice and the bible say in everything give thanks unto the lord for this is the will of god concerning you <laughs> lord and that, and, and that taught me something and i'm able to share a word with you all this evening because i realize you know i don't know what your specific situation is you may not even have a situation you might have uh, conjured up a situation in your head to complain about because you ain't got nothing else better to do but complain about everything that's going wrong when there's so much more that's going right. God has given you another day's journey. You got to maximize this day. You got to do the best you can this day. You got to rejoice in the Lord because he is good and his mercy is everlasting. This is the Amen. day that the Lord has made. Yes. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. So we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. 
have you rejoiced today? Have you found anything to rejoice about today? And I, it ain't have to have to be nothing happened. When you get to the place where you're just glad God give you another day, ain't nothing got to happen. Because you know that the times are in God's hand. Your time is in God's hand. If he decides yeah. to bless you today, praise the Lord. Yeah. That, that, that's how much trust you got you to gotta, you gotta have in the Lord. You got to build up this trust. It don't just happen just because you say you're a Christian. Mm. You got to build up that faith. You got to get to the place where you just glad that God is God and he's watching over you. I will rejoice <laughs> and be glad. In it. Lord have yeah, mercy. Yeah. I'm happy today. I'm happy. Ain't nothing special happening happen today. God brought me up and down the dangerous highway. I'm here. I'm able to share a word from God with the people of God. That's 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 enough to, to shout about. I'm glad. See what happened is, and I, we're gonna move on to another scripture here. What what then happened is, and what is supposed to happen as you continue to follow after the Lord, He shifts your character. He changes your character. And what God has done. He has shifted my character. He softened my heart to understand I'm glad to be here. I don't have to have a whole lot of things to rejoice. Yeah. I got Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That's enough to shout about. I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be woke. I'm glad my eyes been open. I'm glad I know the truth. I'm glad about it. Yeah. He gave me another day's journey. Are you glad? What you glad about this evening? What you glad about? To be still here. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We still here. here we still here. here. I ain't on no breathing machine. I mean, I ain't going to go down that road. I, you know how that perpetual praise is. Once you start thanking God for one thing, you just go off. It, it start a chain reaction. You know, it's so much I can thank God for, but I, I'm going to move on here. I'm going to rejoice because yeah. this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be thankful for everything. Hallelujah. Every breath you take, every step you take. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for God. <laughs> well, for God, we wouldn't have seen this day. Right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Let's go to uh we're gonna go to Lamentations and we're gonna come back to some Psalms. Lamentations. What you have what you glad about today? Just trying to jar somebody's faith and outlook on life in general. Me and these books in the Bible, I remember Sister Hope used to have them kids back in the back at Sunday school, and they come out and they can say every every book in the Bible in order. <laughs> and here I am been preaching over 20 years, and I still have trouble finding where a book at in the Bible. Ain't that something? Oh, I'm, I'm ashamed. But I, I still rejoice because I can I can figure that out. I can find that out. There ain't nothing. Yeah. Or buy me a Bible with the tabs on it. That'll help me out. Man. I'm gonna be in Lamentations chapter three as soon as I find it, y'all. Y'all bear with me. Alright, Lamentation chapter three. Alright. <laughs> And again, these very familiar passages of scripture and what we don't want to get caught up in when we read the Bible is get caught up in the mundane, you know, the monotonous routine. You know, we hear the same old, same old word, but we don't fully dive into it and, and study it and see what it's really saying to us. And so we hear it 
as just a passing cliche and we don't fully understand what it means. We don't meditate on it and make it mean more than what it what it really is to us personally. All right. So just to say this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. You might hear that a, a, a million times, but until it means something to you, all right, until you read it and it means something to you, it got to mean something to you to see this day and understand it's a day that the Lord has made. That's enough to rejoice and be glad about. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so Lamentations chapter 3. Um, I'm going I'm to start at verse number 18. And Lamentations is, is a cry out. It's a, it's a weeping, a mourning. All right, so Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. So these are Lamentations come from uh, Jeremiah. Um uh, Lamentations chapter 3 verse 18 He said and I said My strength and my hope is perished From the Lord Remembering my affliction And my misery The wormwood and the gall My soul has them still in remembrance And is humbled in me This I recall to my mind Therefore have I hope it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. All right, listen. Jeremiah speaks, he said, in his, in his troubles, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. See, you're in, a, you're in a bad situation, brothers and sisters, when you lose hope. Yes. When you feel like there is no way I can make it. When you start thinking like that, the enemy has you where he wants you. You can have money. You can have uh, fame, you can have food on your table, roof over your head, you can have people around you that truly do love you, but when you start making yourself believe I ain't, I can't make it, I don't know what to do, I give up when you lose hope and you start thinking like that, the enemy got you where he want, he, where he want you you can't lose hope See, the scripture says, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. I rem I'm remembering, listen, I'm remembering my affliction and my misery. If that's all you dwell on, you're going to find yourself losing hope. If all you dwell on is your misery, your, you know, your, your, your afflictions, you know, how things hasn't happened to you, the bad if you wake up in the morning and that's the first thing you think about and all you think about all day long is misery and affliction, you're going to mess around and lose hope. Yes. But the Bible says this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why every opportunity I get, I, I, I thank God for the opportunity to speak a word into God's people. Because when you hear the word, the engrafted word of God, the pure word of God, when you hear the word of God, it'll produce faith in you. It'll make you see, maybe I can make it. That's producing faith. When you start thinking about the goodness of the Lord and all he can do and the mighty works that he can do, when you start thinking about how, how powerful God is, how much he loves you, when you start thinking about all the good things that God has done for you, that produces faith in you. And, you, you, and, and, and as a result, you begin to say, you know what? I believe I can make it. I believe I give I give God another chance. I I'll, I'll trust God a little bit more. I believe this thing is gonna shift on my behalf. 
That's why you got to hear the word of God. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy. Telling you, yes, you may have affliction. You may have misery. You may have suffering going on in your life. But you can't dwell on that. You got to dwell on the good things that God has done for you. Dwell on that. How many times, you know, we got this memory bank. <laughs> and some of us, we make too many deposits into the negative. That, that, that side of our bank full. <laughs> that memory bank full. You, you, you can go make withdrawal right now on a whole lot of negative stuff. Because <laughs> that bank full. That memory bank full of negative stuff. Everything that happens to you that's negative, you deposit it in that memory bank, that side of your brain or your heart, and you, you, make, you make withdrawals. You go to the teller every time. You make withdrawals. Give me something negative, and it'll pop right out. But some of us in our memory bank, we don't deposit none of the good things that, that God has done. We don't deposit the, 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 the great things, the blessings that God has done for us. And so when we go to make a withdrawal and, and be, so, so we can and be encouraged and think about some good things to give us some hope and some faith to move on and run on. We ain't got no we ain't got no insufficient funds. <laughs> we ain't got nothing to draw out, cause we ain't deposit nothing in the good side. <laughs> oh my God. We got look, the same way you focus on negative things is the same way you can focus on positive things. If somebody in your life, listen, if somebody in your life, and y'all know how this works. If somebody in your life do something bad to you or cross you in a certain kind of way, especially family members or the people closer to you, when they do something bad, we quick to remind them. Every time we see them, we'll remind them. You know what you did. We'll bring it up. Or if we don't say nothing, we'll think about it over and over and over. But the same way you can think about them negative things, guess what? You can think about them positive things. When they blessed you, you can think about that over and over. Remind them of that. I, I sure do thank you how you've been kind to me. I sure do thank you that you was thinking about me. Don't just let the action go and then don't say nothing else about it. Bring that up sometime. Right. Create a positive atmosphere. Mm. <laughs> but listen, uh, Jeremiah was too focused on the misery and the the, the affliction, he said, the wormwood and the gall, the bitterness of the things that has happened to him. <laughs> he focused on that. And he said, verse 20, my soul has them still in remembrance and it, I'm, I'm humbled. I, I remember all this bad stuff. I recall it to my mind, but I got to remember where my help come from. <laughs> Lord have mercy. See, when you, when, when you feel like the enemy is dragging you down, and you can feel it when, when you're going down, God going to call you higher. You got to, whose voice are you listening to? Mm. <laughs> he said, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. These things try to make me lose hope, but I hope in God. Listen, how, look at how the shift takes place. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Mm. <laughs> because his compassions fail not. When God, listen, God, he ain't left you alone because you in a, in, in a, a, a terrible place, a, a, a tough place. He ain't left you alone. You may, you may feel like God ain't hearing your prayer. Yeah. But God, he's listening. He's right. listening. The Bible says he will hear and answer your prayer. Mm. He's listening. <laughs> it, it is of the Lord's mercy that the enemy has not taken you out. Yeah. One of my members told me in, in the midst of the storm, said this was a previous storm. Said, mm. you know, I thought I was going to be in the crazy house. Because of what has happened to me. 
But the Lord brought me through that. And my, my response was, the Lord brought you through that and he going to bring you through this. And that member come back to the church with a testimony. I don't see how I have come this far. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I don't see how I come this far. But I know the Lord is going to carry me on. See, that, that's, that's it right there, my brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. You got to speak faith in the people. You got to trust God. You got to have hope in him. Yes. <laughs> it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. He says, because his compassions fail not. Verse 23, they are new when? Every morning. Yes. God's mercy and faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. It's new every morning. How is it new? How is something new to God? And that's a question when the Bible says, and, and it seems like it's a, uh, the Bible contradicting itself. How can something be new you know, if the Bible says uh, there's nothing new under the sun, how can there be anything new? Well, listen, I'm going I'm to break it down like this. And this is the only way I know to break it down where we all can understand. I'm uh, 45 years old, 45 in January. And I ain't never been 45 on May the 26th in 2021. That's new to me. <laughs> I ain't never been in this place in my life That's new This day is new to me I've never seen it God, he knows the end from the beginning He knows all He has all knowledge But how is it new to us? Because we never seen this day before His mercies are new this morning Because we never been where we are In the situations we are in this day right now. now. But guess what? Because we are here, we understand that it's the Lord's mercies. We wasn't consumed yesterday. Amen. But we saw his mercy this morning in this brand new day that he has made. Mm. <laughs> That's how your mercies are new every morning. If you Amen. live to see, if God touch you in the morning on, on Thursday, May the 27th, 2021. You ain't never seen that day yet. That'd be, a, that'd be new mercy. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <sighs> so somebody say, I'm always buying used stuff. You ain't never had nothing new. But you got some new mercy this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And that, that's, that's worthy of praise. That's why the Bible teaches us uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Y'all see how Jeremiah, his, his whole mentality began to shift as he began to praise God, as he began to think about the goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Initially, he was all he was reminiscing about was his misery, his, his, his affliction. But he had to think about the goodness of the Lord, how God's mercy endures forever. How God is faithful to his word. So his, his, his mindset began to shift from hopeless to hopeful. Yes. I can make it through this day because this is a day the Lord has made. I can make it through this day. I can rejoice in this day because God has given me new mercy to make it through this day. Remember the, 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 the prayer it says, give us this day our daily bread. This day, God instructed the people of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt and carried them through the wilderness. When he began to rain down manna from heaven, he instructed them, get enough for that day. 
Don't get no more, no extra for the days ahead. I want to teach y'all how to trust me every day of your life. Get enough. I'm a gift. I'm a provide enough for this day. <laughs> that that's that's God's goodness. That's His faithfulness. I'm a provide enough for this day. That's good news today. We need to take a different perspective on the days that God give us. Remain hopeful. We need to start rejoicing and realize. If we start chasing after God, if we start moving in his direction, if we start, you know, working toward the vision that he has given us, one day is going to come to pass. If we start having faith in the promises of God, one of these old days, the promise is going to be fulfilled. Great is your faithfulness. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about this evening. Your complaining ain't helping the situation. Your complaining producing doubt and fear and, and everything against the will of God. Start complaining. Rejoice in the day that God has given you. Yes, it may be hard, but that shouldn't keep you from rejoicing. Tell God thank you through your tears, through your trials, through your tests. Tell God thank you. Lord, I praise you. Let me, let me give you something else. What, where does the time go? I just keep saying that. Just keep saying that. All right. I'm going to read another one. I'm, I'm going to try to end up in, uh, in James. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Bottom line, I want to encourage you to be hopeful. Be joyful in this day that the Lord has given you. Be glad. Be glad it ain't as bad as what, is it, what it is. Be glad he's giving you another day to work toward that goal that you set. Be glad that he's giving you more time to work on some areas of your life that you have not quite gotten perfected yet. Be glad that we are not consumed. I want you to have a po positive outlook on your life. Begin to think more positive. And I, I, I'm not with this positive thinking stuff because God instructed us to move by faith. All right? But I do want you to think more positive. I'm not saying thinking positive is going to change your whole atmosphere. I'm saying having faith in God. Praising God, being glad in Him will change your whole atmosphere. All right? But I want you to start thinking more positive. All right? Thinking more positive that things are going to work in your behalf because of what God said. That's just not positive thinking. That's, that's thinking positive as a result of the Word of God. That's, what I, that's the bottom line. And I want you to... I, I, I want to throw this out there. Maximize the time that God gives you. Maximize it. You don't want to lay idle and, and, and then live in regret wishing you had a done such and such. Wishing that you had a said certain thing. Wishing that you had a gone certain places. That God whispers to you or instructs you to do or leads you into or guides you into doing. Maximize your time. God brought you to this day for a reason and for a purpose. Yes. All right. And, and look, when I say maximize your, your time, if you choose to lay there all day long and get you some re needed rest, you have maximized your day. I um one one of the um, men God placed in my life was my grandfather, brother Heston Bell. Um, he showed me how to be a hardworking man. Don't let nothing stop you. He was eighty six years old and still going underneath people's houses and working, and 
I was around 18 going under the house with him and I end up going to sleep under the house and he's still under there working. <laughs> <laughs> but that was Monday through Friday and, and sometimes Saturday he'll, he'll go out. But come Sunday, he'll go to church and he wouldn't lift a finger the rest of the day. Now, was he sitting idle? No. But he understood the purpose, the, the purpose of rejuvenation, of, you know, getting rest. Yeah. You ain't going to make me do nothing else. <laughs> I'm going to sit on the porch and swat flies the rest of the day. Yeah. Take a nap. And if you've seen him up past 8, 30, 9 o'clock, the Dodgers must have been playing uh, extra innings. Because he was going to sleep. 8.39, he was gone. He'd get his rest. I'm just saying, you got to maximize your day. Maximize your day. Okay? All right. So, um, I'm going a, I'm to a read verse, uh, I mean, Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms real quick. We've got a couple of minutes. Do an assessment, brothers and sisters. The Bible says examine yourself. Do, a, do an assessment sometime and, and, and get a grip on what you're thinking, how you think. Are your, are your, uh, your thoughts hopeful or are they thoughts of doom and gloom and they're driving you down a, 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 a path of hopelessness? You got to renew your faith in this new day that the Lord has made. There's, there's a whole lot to be thankful for. Psalm 68. I'm going to read verse uh, 19. It says, Blessed be the Lord. Listen. Who daily loads us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation. Blessed be the Lord, who does what? Daily loads us with what? Benefits. You know, it's one thing to get a, a, a job that pays you good, but ain't got no benefit. But it's another one that maybe have average pay, but it's loaded with benefits. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, that's what you want to go after, the benefits. And God daily does what? Loads us with benefits. The benefits of serving the Most High God. And I ain't got time to even talk about how he's a shelter in the time of a storm. That's a benefit. How he makes a way out of no way. That's a benefit of serving your God. How he provides for you. How he's near unto you. How he walks with you and talks with you and calls you his own. How he's a healer. How he gives us, you know, blessed assurance. You know, with, with, with your employment, you, you might get insurance, but God gives you assurance. That's a benefit. <laughs> he gives you life assurance. That you'll have everlasting life when you leave this world. You got a retirement program. Ain't the Lord all right? He loads us with benefits daily. That's the God we serve. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who daily loads us with benefits. See, the problem is, and I had, I had this discussion as well. I got insurance, but I don't fully understand the coverages. <laughs> and I promise you, uh, some insurances is not going to make it their business to let you know that. They ain't going to just up and say, oh, well, we cover all that. No, they don't want to do that. And it take them so long to, to, to put that coverage into place. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But see, God daily loads us with benefits. And how do we know what he's covering? You got to read the Bible. It's all spelled out in there. And they sent me a whole book about my insurance coverage. 
But I ain't opened that thing yet. Why? Because they ain't got no pictures in it. Ain't nothing but words. And I ain't reading all that. And I ain't hurting nobody but myself. Because <laughs> now I don't know what they cover. Well, I'm trying to help somebody today. But when we serving God, he got benefits. And some of us got that same mentality. I don't know what he can do. I don't know if he can do that for me. Why you don't know that? Because you ain't read the Bible. And I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this. Go to the, the Christian bookstore and find you a Bible with some pictures in it. Because it is some picture Bibles. <laughs> if you don't like to read. Look at the picture of how he raised up Lazarus. <laughs> or how he healed a lame man. The Lord daily loads us with benefits, brothers and sisters. Daily. Let me end up on in James. Y'all, y'all, listen, it's so much to be thankful for. This is a day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to read in James chapter number four. The last thing I want to impress upon your heart um, is going to come out of James chapter 4, <clears throat> verse number 13. I'm going to read, begin at verse number 13. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 4 verse 13 says, Go to now ye that say, Today or tomorrow we'll go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. For that you ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. All right, so here, the, the last point I want to um, make to you this evening concerning the days that God gives you, tomorrow is not promised to you. Amen. Here's a warning in James that we should not boast about what we're going to do tomorrow. That, that's not saying don't make plans, but don't boast about what you're going to do tomorrow as if you got things in that much control. You don't. That's why it's important we rejoice and be glad in every day that God gives us. Because tomorrow is not promised. And people say that so much nowadays till they don't even believe that. Some people don't even believe that. They still carry on like tomorrow is going to come just like all the other tomorrows. But when you realize tomorrow is not promised, it, it, when this word actually registers to you that tomorrow is not promised, the Bible says, uh, what is your life? You don't know what shall be on the, tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Our lives is like a vapor that appears for a moment and then vanishes away. For that, we ought to say, if the Lord will, if it's his will, we'll live to see tomorrow and do this or that. That's why it must have been his will to show us today. And that's worth rejoicing. That's a reason to be glad. Do you know how much... Brothers and sisters, how many of y'all been to the doctor today? How many of y'all been to work today? How many of y'all been on that dangerous highway today? How many of y'all just, just moved around? Amen. You, do you know how easy it is for the enemy to take us out? Yes. The enemy, take, he, he causes things to happen to us. Sometimes we innocent People, innocent bystanders, somebody else having trouble, and, and they over there shooting, and we take the bullet. Ain't got nothing to do with that. Anything could take us out. 
pain in our head. That might have been the enemy trying to make an aneurysm, you know, come in your head or something in your chest. That might have been the enemy trying to take you out with a blood clot or something. Anything can happen to us in any given day. But guess what? God's mercies are new every morning. If it's the Lord's will, we'll live. We live in. That's not to say, you know, everybody that, that dies is bad. No. Because God said we our days are, are numbered. We're here for a short while. And then we leave here. That's a that's a reality. Adam brought that curse, death curse on us. All right. But the good news is the son, Jesus Christ, brings life everlasting to us. The promise for life everlasting. And I, I praise him for that. But if it, it's the Lord's will, we'll live and do this or that. We live in. We live in right now, brothers and sisters. That's worthy of the praise. We ought to be rejoicing and be glad in this day that God has given us. So don't take days for granted, brothers and sisters. God has been merciful. He's been merciful and shown us a brand new day. Now you take, you take life by the horns, if you will. You take control of your life within the power of God because ultimately he controls your life, whether you even see a day or not. But if he gives you a new day, Make it your business to do his will. Love your brothers and sisters. Have peace with your brothers and sisters. Forgive quickly. Forgive. Be joyful in this day that God has given you. Be positive. Have a positive outlook. Remain hopeful in this day that God has given you. It's a good day. It's a good day. God has been good to us. His mercy is everlasting. Yeah. And we thank him for this new day's journey. It's about to be night, but it's still a day that the Lord has made. Hey, yeah. <laughs> all day long, like the song say, all day long I've been with Jesus. <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Well, once again, our time has come. We, we, you know, we would love to, you know, chit chat with you all night long. And, you know, it's up to me. I, I'd be on here all night as if I ain't got nothing else to do. I just talk about Jesus all night long in hopes that somebody would be encouraged, in hopes that somebody would draw closer to the Lord. But I realize we got other things to do, so we're going to end it here. <laughs> just remember. We love you, but God loves you more. And y'all be encouraged. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you this evening.